Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in, so to speak. Uh, today I'd like to talk about trills, as this particular Sarban, the Sarban of the D minor suite, the second suite, uh, has some controversial ones. Yeah, the word controversial is really funny when you talk about trills. <laughs> question is whether we use the rule Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach was one of Johann Sebastian's sons, and he uh, was also a very famous composer, more famous than his dad uh, back then. And he wrote an important book. The book is called The Essay on the Art of Playing Keyboard Instruments. Uh, in the book, he explains, uh, among other things, how to execute trills. The first bar of the second Suite Saraband. <laughs> trill obviously and one way to play this trill is by starting from the F but if we do that we are compromising the integrity of this uh, first uh, subject which repeats a few times in this movement it repeats in bar five So the melodic line D, E, E, D, E, F um, can be obscured if we add this appoggiatura on the second beat of bar three uh, we have a trillion Kellner's copy uh, um, again you can start uh, the trill from the upper note, uh, but it would be redundant since we just played the G. So you're repeating the G. So another way uh, to play it would be without the G, starting from the principal note, which is the F. Um, I don't like this trill at all. Um, when we get to bar four, uh, the trill is on the downbeat and if we compare it to bar eight you can decide how long you want to sit on that appoggiatura um, and var varying that length is is a good idea so it's not too repetitive uh, so perhaps don't sit so much on the upper note. First time around, uh, and more in bar eight. One more thing to consider is the rest point, which is when we rest on the main note after ending the trill before the end of the note. So here in the first bar. if you really want to rest there uh, because the last two notes are a suffix and could be interpreted as a part of the trill uh, but bar four um, calls for a resting point in my opinion many other people's opinion this is bar three. so as you heard I stopped my trill on the second beat so common practice in the Baroque, coming back to the first bar, that tricky little bar, um, consider playing a continuous trill there. Uh, and uh, treating the last two sixteenth notes as a suffix, um, the ending of the trill, 
um, without being rigid about it, uh, try to um, play your trill in about the same uh, rhythm as you would play those two last sixteenth notes. Let's look at the division uh, into kind of sentences. Uh, here we have two bars. <laughs> by three eight notes uh, and this separation this those three eight notes uh, are coming back again and again uh, we have again uh, three eight notes uh, in bar four <laughs> can find ways uh, to play with those three notes. Um, let's not play them the same every time. Uh, for example, the second bar is leading into the third bar. Uh, so... And then the fourth bar is uh, coming away from the fifth bar. So... To interpret uh, these three notes, you can reverse that order so you can play. Uh, here less. And grow, grow into the F. Um, but I think it, it would really add to your uh, performance if you think differently uh, about um, and, and think of what those three notes actually do. Uh, where do they lead? How do they lead to the next uh, phrase? The first two bars also have the bass note, which is here. So the lower voice. Um, the, the next two bars don't have that lower voice. So um, it's more of a you know, tenor or alto uh, feel. The next uh, bars, five and six, again, we see that bass uh, line. So, uh, so when you practice at home, try to just play the bass line and then add the rest. Um, Again, it's a D, A, and D in the first and second bars, and then uh, F, A, D in the bars five and six. Again, um, we have three eighth notes that connect us to uh, bar. seven I like adding the bass line uh, when I practice only 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 when I practice um, this clarifies the harmony for me um, so and again uh, these suites are senza basso and should stay that way um, but sometimes it helps if we add those uh, bass notes just so we we feel um, we can shade and create colors that are the right colors for the harmony. Uh, here I diminuendo into bar nine um, with those three eighth notes. And here it starts uh, a new beginning. Think how you're gonna roll your chord here. And when when do you leave the A to play by itself? I wouldn't keep the D going all the way uh, to the G. Um, we have A. A, G, F, G. And to make that a uh, clear line, I like to leave out the D at some point. So. Same here. I leave the B flat to sing by itself. Um. Two 
voices. So the C and the G are the lower voice. Um, uh, so if you want to practice just uh, the upper voice. second cellist next to you and they play that lower voice. Let's look at the second half here. I love thinking about how the Baroque bow is different than our modern bow. Um, it is lighter at the tip and uh, naturally the down bow would be heavier than uh, the up bow. Uh, so instead of trying to play everything evenly, uh, <laughs> I actually try to emphasize the fact that the up bow is lighter. So, so uh, let's see if you can do it too when you practice. Uh, so exaggeration always is a good idea when we practice um, and then we don't, once we have it in our ear, we don't have to exaggerate as much. <laughs> That's a difficult tr trill. Um, I use my first finger on the E flat and uh, trill with a second finger on the B flat and A. <laughs> that resting point uh, on the third beat. Uh, so I stop my trill on the third beat. And stop. Um, here, uh, the trill on the F sharp is a short one. In my opinion, maybe even one, one uh, oscillation. Um, here it does start from the upper uh, neighbor because we connect to the A that came just before. So, uh, so the A. So if we go from A to G to F sharp, uh, we have a cohesive line. Um, this is a beautiful line. Uh, we have D, if we're looking at the lower line here, a starting bar, 12, 13, 14. Um, we have D, the notes in red, uh, and then we add the higher voice. Um, let's just play the top voice now. division but you get the idea. In bar 17 we again have those two voices. E. C sharp. Um, the voice in red are, is the lower voice. And then can feel uh, fill in the harmony as I like to do when I practice and only when I practice um, in bars 19 and 20. Uh, so let me start from bar 17 to show you what I do. going a sort of a mini pedal point uh, in bar 18 so <laughs> Three is a culmination. 
it is almost an exclamation um, and a sudden drop happens um, right after that on the second beat of that bar um, sort of a resignation um, so <laughs> the parallel place in the first half there is a whole turn at the end of bar 10 uh, so um, <laughs> Bach condenses this phrase, um, it feels like a stretto, um, so things feel denser and definitely more expressive. Then we have this gorgeous scale um, going up with the 16th notes, um, you can diminuendo into bar 27. <laughs> up and crescendo slightly or just not diminuendo there <laughs> you can try both ways one way for each uh, of the repeats notice the accidentals in bars uh, 25 and 26 in Anna Magdalena's copy um, clear as day there is no mistake here my friends uh, let's do what's written. So, um. so we have a sequence. Uh. and see you next time.